Okay, so I finally finished my handmade 10 by 8 by 6. I actually started this puzzle all the way back in 2014 and uh, just been picking away at it like seriously a couple hours every few days or something or a few weeks for the longest time and uh, now it's finally done. Uh, this puzzle was made out of a Shengxiao 10 by 10 obviously. Uh, I, what I did was for the eight I bandaged the top two layers and the two bottom layers together and then just filled in the gaps with epoxy sculpt to, to create one big layer on the six what I did was bandaged uh, the top and bottom three layers and then also sanded it down a bit so then these uh, these outer edges are the same on every axis and then for the ten I didn't glue anything together and I built up with epoxy sculpt. Now I used a method which I haven't used before or since and that is using cards. I took cards and I filled in all the gaps and then I pushed epoxy sculpt into the gaps and then uh, you know do a little bit of touch work uh, touch up work afterwards. As you can see the result is uh, not too shabby. Uh, for what it is it did take a, a bit of you know there was little problems where there was air pockets and stuff I needed to fill in those but uh, for the most part uh, it all worked out well now this puzzle actually was not spray painted like uh, most hand mods that I've done what I actually did was I just took some uh, silicone lube and I just like rubbed it on all of the pieces and for some reason that makes the uh, epoxy sculpt go from gray to black so this puzzle isn't quite as shiny as if I uh, spray painted it, but it uh, it actually, yeah, just putting a little bit of uh, lube on the, all the surfaces of the pieces and you actually get uh, a fairly decent color out of it and you don't need to spray paint. So it's kind of like eliminating a step. And uh, you know, I would have spray painted it, but I didn't have spray paint, so uh, yeah. Turning on this puzzle is uh, not too bad. It, uh, it's a little hard to, a little awkward to turn. It is very heavy, like uh, significantly heavier than a 9x9 nine nine or uh, the original 10x10, 10 10, just because of how much epoxy sculpt on this thing. This thing, uh, especially on these two sides where it was built up, it's just a crazy amount of epoxy sculpt. There we go. I absolutely love the Olzing effect on this puzzle. Uh, normally, Olzing I, it kind of has a look which I'm not a huge fan of, where you know it's more like this, and there's there's curves and stuff, uh, and there is you know that curve right there. But for the most part, I mean, this thing is just kind of jagged and all over the place. I think it's pretty cool, you know, especially around here where you just have you know gaps and random little bits, and uh, you know the layers. You can see these just sort of go into the puzzle a bit and yeah it's a cool look one thing I haven't tried yet is a center swap which always looks cool on the ultimate shapeshifters there we go that's about the biggest uh, center swap I'm gonna be able to do definitely uh, gives you a good idea of the layers especially on uh, this where you can see uh, how much it was shaved down from the original and then how much it was built up from the original with this uh, red in the center being the original uh, width of the puzzle and then you get these cool little uh, big dip below and then a border and such each one's a little different yeah so it's <laughs> one thing to do with it So yeah, this is the uh, the first ultimate shapeshifter that I've ever made uh, in this method. This was inspired by uh, a lot of the cuboids Trifum has made over the years, and uh, I wanted to try to make at least one kind of big cuboid in that style, I guess, because it was something I'd never done before. So that was sort of what I was going for here. Now, uh, I guess I'm going to scramble it now. I seriously have... Uh, no experience with solving cuboids like I can solve a 3x3x5 in you know 20 minutes or something if I uh, if 
I know, like, if I just uh, fiddle around with it, I guess. Already. So now, with a cuboid like this, you gotta do the uh, 180 degree turns, I believe. Well, yeah. Before you get into the shape shifting. Now, since this is an ultimate shape shifter, I guess there's also, like, an order to how you should start shape shifting. And I'm not actually 100% sure what that is, so. I guess I'll have to guess at it. Might not fully scramble this if I mess it up, though. Oh well. Alright, I think that's probably got it for the 180 degree turns. Now I'm going to do uh, these these kinds of turns, I guess. Uh, start shape shifting that. Okay, I think that's a fairly sufficient uh, scrambling of those layers. So now I'm going to go into the full blown shape shift situation. And oh my goodness, yep. Things are getting a little wild. Oh boy. Yeah, that's where, <laughs> that's where things take a bit of a turn. Okay. <laughs> this is such a weird puzzle. This like reminds me of the uh, of the nine by nine barrel cube kind of. It's the only puzzle that I've handled that really shape shifted this much. All right, I think that's a pretty sufficient scramble. Just take a look at this thing. This thing is just insane. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's really, yeah, it, it scrambles into just such an awful mess. Um, again, I, I can barely solve, you know, a 3x3x5. Three by three by this is going to be interesting. I think if I just fiddle around with it for long enough, I can do it. But man, I really love, uh, like, here, where you see, like, uh, it's still flat, but then the light like the lines aren't matching up and there's like oh that's cool yeah i like that and yeah man it's it's just such a jumble yeah well uh that's that's it for this video i guess uh thank you for watching i'm gonna go ahead and try to solve this I probably pick away at it slowly i guess probably not gonna do this in one sitting uh so yeah that is the uh, ultimate shapeshifter 10 by 8 by 6